Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back to another video. Someone asked me the other day, Sen, who is your target audience? Well, today the target audience is all the medical students who watch my videos. Now, I never realised medical students watch my videos until once I was in an Apple store in London and someone studying medicine in London tapped me on the shoulder and asked, wait, are you Sen Kath from YouTube? So given that and how YouTube analytics suggests that quite a few medical students around the world and in the UK watch my videos, today's topic is about something very, very relevant how the Junior Doctor Foundation application program is changing and why your voice is going to be very important in helping shape the future. For those of you who don't know, the Foundation program is the general program into which medical students in the UK go into for two years to do their foundation training. The first two years on the job as a doctor and finally holding quite some responsibility for the actions that you take in a medical setting when looking after patients. Now, for medical students, foundation applications can become quite competitive. If you want to be posted as a junior doctor in one of the most popular areas, such as London, Cambridge, Oxford, amongst other places in the country, then you've got to score very highly in the FPAS application. Now at the moment, the score that you get for the application comprises of your SJT score, your situational judgment test score, your ranking in your own specific medical school from all the exams you've done for medicine, a few points for publication and a few points for your intercalation. You could score up to 50 points for your SJT score, 43 points for your decile or ranking in your medical school, five points for any additional degrees you've done, and two points for any publications that you've been involved in over your five, six years in medical school. Given there are thousands of medical students in the country every year applying for these positions, it can get really, really competitive. And every single point counts in the end when you're going for the most competitive deaneries. It's no wonder medical students can be some of the most hardworking students in universities, trying to score as highly as possible to get their best rankings in their medical school, but also working relentlessly, pumping out publications, and in addition to that, doing additional degrees, like I did a master's in engineering, to become more well-rounded doctors that can help meaningfully in the NHS. So the people who look after this application process, the UK FPO, what they've done is they've changed the application process recently, and let's just say it's not the most advantageous. They've practically said that if you do any intercalations or any additional degrees or have any publications, this is no longer going to be considered when you're applying for junior doctor positions. Now, as I said, these junior doctor positions can be very, very competitive. And if you remove this extra opportunities for students to show even more engagement and motivation to be good doctors, then that's not the most ideal of situations. So after 2022, medical students will simply be judged upon their SJT score and their decile in their individual medical schools for the junior doctor application rounds. Now, I personally think this is not the most advantageous of things. As a person who's an advocate of academic medicine to improve the quality of care for patients, but also as someone who really believes that every student should be doing intercalations to become more well-rounded doctors in the future, this change is not going to do any good in incentivizing students to do things beyond their typical medical school curriculum. Now, my opinions aside, other medical students also feel very much the same. So what's happened is, the student body of the Royal Society of Medicine, ACIT, the Association of Surgeons in Training, but also Star Surge UK, a student-led surgical orientated research collaborative, all of them have come together to lead the first national survey amongst medical students to really find out what medical students think about these changes. The survey already has around 2,000 responses and the goal is 5,000. So you sharing your opinion on these recent FPAS changes will make the world of a difference. Now, yes, the application body has made these changes, but if medical students really believe that these changes don't allow them to fairly represent their achievements throughout medical school, then hopefully UK FPO will listen to medical students and make some changes, or at least allow for other ways of incorporating extra achievements medical students may have in their application process for foundation positions. So what I really encourage you to do if you're a medical student or have friends who are medical students is to fill in the survey linked in the description down below. The results from the survey, whichever way it goes, is going to be instrumental in highlighting the medical student's opinion on these recent UK FPO foundation application changes. Of course, I have my opinion, but I really encourage you and your medical school friends to fill this in so we can see what the outcome of this survey is. Now, for those people saying, well, Sen, it's kind of a good thing that they're not really including intercalations or publications and junior doctor positions anymore. It relieves the pressure on medical students. Well, I do agree with you. And in the longer term, doing intercalations and having publications is going to be more beneficial when you're applying for your specialist training posts. However, as a person who's at Cambridge and as a person who knows many other medical students at other medical schools who really encourage intercalations and encourage publishing your work and you know getting involved in evidence-based medicine, this in the long term won't be the best of directions to move. In. And I do know that in the UK, they do have plans to bring in a completely new exam in the next five, 10 years time, whereby medical students 
their training posts are changed in terms of the way they apply, similar to how in the US you have the USMLE, every single medical student will sit a standardized test, which can help them work out where they'll be ranked and which hospitals they'll go to for their foundation training. But this isn't in the near future. And meanwhile, all of that gets planned. These recent changes to the FPAS, the application system, whereby they don't include intercalations or publications in your application, I think won't be the best at all. So whatever your opinion is, I suggest you get involved with the survey. Like I said, it's backed by ACIT, the Royal Society of Medicine and Starside UK. And hopefully the results from the survey will be significant enough to have a meaningful publication that shares a representative national student opinion on these recent junior doctor application changes. So this video, yes, is targeted towards a specific niche of my audience. However, I really believe once in a while, it's really important I discuss topical matters with you. Since during medical school, it can become very easy to get lost in all your work and forget about all the bureaucratic stuff that goes on around it. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. And like I said, please fill in the survey if you are a medical student. And if you're not, then please send this on to medical student friends so they can fill it in and we can get a huge number of responses. I think the survey already has more than 2,000 responses. So hopefully with your help, we can reach our target of 5,000 responses. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys soon in the next video. Cheerio.